So the service industry can't find workers. The curious case of hard to find workers, why are businesses struggling to hire? Those are just some of the headlines that we have been tracking at this stage of the pandemic. As employers at places like grocery stores and shops and restaurants struggle to hire and retain staffers, despite the high unemployment rate, it is something we've even seen locally. So we wanted to bring in a local voice with some major recognition to talk about this this morning. Uh, joining me now to discuss this, uh, the CEO known for cutting his own salary and raising his company's minimum wage to $70,000 a year. That made headlines as well. Their revenue has tripled since then. Dan Price of Gravity Payments. Dan, thank you so much for joining us and being here. Thanks for having me on, Liz. So let's talk a little bit about this because, yeah, we saw those headlines and we've been seeing them. I mean, at last check, Washington's unemployment rate about 5.4% right now. So why are businesses struggling to hire people? Well, uh, my friend Ethan Stoll, who's one of the top restaurant owners in Seattle, I think he's opened maybe 25 restaurants in the last 15 years around Seattle. He shared with me a long time ago his concern that Seattle would become like San Francisco where they couldn't find enough workers because of the outrageous costs of living. And it, when the cost of living, when the bills are going up, but your pay is not going up proportionately, at some point you're just squeezed and it doesn't make sense to, to continue. And so I think we're seeing that happening right now in Seattle and I think we have to address it. I mean, when, you, when it comes to addressing it, that's, that's a lot of issue. Those, those are so many situations, and you've got so many people impacted at that point. So what do you do? What do workers do? What do businesses do at this point? Well, a business, any business can do something to address it. Um, they can look and they can say, well, you know, what are the expenses of the people that work here? And what do we pay and does it pencil out? And every business right now needs to be doing that equation because it is such a big crisis that it needs to be a, a focus. Now, if a business can afford to, the best investment that any business can make right now is to pay their employees more, hands down. But even if a business can't totally afford to pay like what we do, $70,000 a year starting wage, Every business can afford to be honest about what this problem is. We know that what we pay does not lead to a good life in our area, and we are trying to find ways to grow our revenue and then share and give 100% of that revenue to employees in the form of raises. Every business can do that, and it'll make things better, not only for the employees, but also for the, for the business. I mean, it's interesting you say that every business can do that. Every business does not do that. I mean, let's be honest. Um, so, so what does it take to change that kind of culture? It's honesty and empathy. You know, it, it, it goes back to just those basics that we all care about so much. Look at the world from your employee's perspective instead of your perspective, and then just be honest about what you see, what that situation is. You're not always perfect as a business owner, so you're going to face scrutiny and that's okay but you need to be honest about where you are and then just set an aggressive goal. Uh, at Gravity, you know, we had years where we had goals of 15 or 20% annual raises. You may not hit that goal, but if you set a goal of a 20% annual raise, it'll motivate your team, it'll bring them all together, and then they'll know that they have a stake in that success that they are responsible for. And Dan, it's interesting because when we talk about, you know, paying employees fairly and, you know, gravity, the, this thing of the starting wages, you mentioned, you know, $70,000. You talk about that a lot on Twitter and we see that. Um, and, and I notice the feedback from employees telling their own stories about what's happening at their job and what they experience. I mean, what are you realistically supposed to do if you are at a job right now, you're overworked, you're underpaid, you're burned out, and you feel nervous to leave a job in the middle of a, of a pandemic? I mean, what would you advise? Well, it's tough because these issues are largely systemic. And so, you know, you're in a really tough situation there. So I just want to acknowledge that. And your options are limited, but you do have some. Going to your boss and basically saying, hey, I want to give you some, I, I want, I want to, you to give me some advice. I want to share with you, you know, kind of what the expenses are around here. I just want to make sure, you know, and I want to compare that to what we're paying. And I want to hear from you, like how you would manage that situation if you were me. And I know that that can be a scary thing to do, to be that vulnerable, that open, that transparent. But maybe just try 1% and then 2% and 3% and see if it feels okay. But I think, you know, that boss, they may not necessarily be in the loop 100% 
on the impact of their decisions. And when you ask them for advice, when you open up what's going on, you open up their eyes to the reality that you're facing. And hopefully then that will motivate them to address it. I love that. And obviously, I mean, during the pandemic, we have seen the workplace change so dramatically. I mean, what do you see for the future of workplaces as we move, hopefully, out of the pandemic? It's going to be all over the place because, you know, at, at, at Gravity Payments, uh, we've been closed uh, literally for over a year now in terms of our office. We've all been working from home because we work pretty well together from home. But there are a lot of businesses where, you know, they have this old school mentality of they want, they call it butts and seats. They know it's a terrible term, but they want to like see people working. And, and so that's going to be, continue to be present out there in the workforce. But I wonder, you know, how it's going to play out because if you have companies that are more employee centric succeeding, um, then that's good because that will motivate more companies to get on board because our employees said, hey, you know, we want the option to work from home at least two or three days a week. Our pets like it. Our kids like it. We like it. And we also want a place to work out of an office when we need to. And we want to see everyone we work with a couple days a week. So, you know, employees prefer that, but not all employers are on board yet. Dan Price, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like I could ask you about a thousand more questions, but we do have to end it there. We certainly appreciate you joining us. My pleasure.